Hi everyone, this is the third in a series of five lessons about linear relationships for Year 10 Mathematics. In this lesson we're going to look at graphing linear relationships. We're going to start by looking at the equation of a line, but we're going to cover this in more detail in the next lesson. The equation of a straight line just shows the relationship between the x and y coordinates. And this is the line y equals 2x take away 1. And a line is actually made up of an infinite number of ordered pairs that satisfy the equation. You can see a couple of them here. So this point here is negative 1, negative 3. And if I substitute that into this equation, we're going to get the same thing on both sides. It's going to satisfy the equation. Now there are three main forms in which straight lines are written. There's the gradient intercept form, which you would have learnt last year, so y equals mx plus b. And in this case, the m stands for the gradient or the slope, and the b is the y-intercept where the line cuts the y-axis. There's also a general form, that's where I put the x's first, followed by the y's, followed by any numbers, and then put it equal to zero. And then finally, there's standard form. I sometimes call this calculator form because it's how you put it into a graphics calculator. That's where we have the x's plus the y's equal to a number. Now, of course, we can change between forms. And we've already learned how to do this in our topic on equations. Remember when we changed the subject of a formula? It's a very similar process. So let's write y equals 3 fifths x take away 1 in general form. All right, because I've got a fraction there, what I want to do is multiply every term by 5. So I'm going to multiply the y by 5. Multiplying this middle term here by 5 is just going to cancel the denominator. And multiply this last one by 5. OK, let's rewrite it. So I'm going to end up with 5y is equal to 3x take away 5. Now if I want general form, I tend to put the x term as positive. So I'm going to move everything to the right hand side. So I'm just going to take this 5y over and it's going to become negative. And there it is, 3x take away 5y take away 5 is equal to 0. And we can change the other way. Write 3x take away 2y take away 4 equals 0 in gradient intercept form. So we we'll start with our equation and probably the best thing to do is to decide which side to put the y's on. So we're going to use this rule. On which side is the y positive? So currently this is negative, so we're going to take this over the other side. So I'm going to get 3x take away 4 equals 2y. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. I'm going to flip it around at the same time. So have a look what I've done. I've divided this by 2, this by 2, and this term by 2. So our answer is y is equal to 3x on 2 take away 2. There are various methods for graphing straight lines, and some of them you've done before. So last year you would have learnt how to do table of values and the y-intercept and gradient method. We're going to go over those in this video and then look at how to graph a straight line through x and y-intercepts, and then finally look at those difficult lines where we're just hoping to find any two integer points. Okay, let's briefly review how to complete a table of values to graph a line. Complete the table of values for the line 2x take away y plus 1 equals 0. So what we're going to do is substitute the 0 into here. And we can see that in that case y is going to be equal to 1. Now this can be a bit tricky. This is written in general form, isn't it? So what we're going to do is substitute the 1 in and then solve the equation. So I'm going to get 2 take away y plus 1 is equal to 0. And when I solve that equation, I'm going to get y is equal to 3. And similarly, substituting the 2 in, I'm going to get y is equal to 5. So we plot those points, draw up the line. Now make sure when you draw your line, you have arrows on both ends. And then we always label the line to finish off. Now let's look at the gradient intercept form, because it's a little bit easier to graph. So we can use the y-intercept and the gradient to graph straight lines. Now remember this form is y equals mx plus b. And the b part, or the number on the end, is the y-intercept. That's where it cuts the y-axis. And this number in front of the x here is the gradient. So the gradient is 2. That's the slope. And remember, we can rewrite that as rise over run. So that's going to be helpful to us. So we're going to begin by plotting the y-intercept, which is here, negative 1. OK, now this means that every point that I go along the x-axis 
the line's going to rise up by two. So what I'm going to do is start at this point and I'm going to go up to across one like this up to across one. So there's the next point and I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, now draw in the line, arrows on both ends, label the line. If a line is written in another form, like general form or standard form, we can change it into gradient intercept form. So let's graph 3x plus y take away 4 equals 0. So firstly, I'm going to turn it around, make y the subject. So y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. Now we're going to figure out what the gradient is and what the y-intercept is. So our gradient is negative 3. We need to write that as a fraction. So it's going to be negative 3 on 1. And this is just going to mean that instead of going up 3, we're going to go down 3 as we go along to the right. And our y-intercept is 4. All right, so there's our graph. Start with 4. And we're going to go down 3, across 1. Let's do it one more time. Down 3, across 1. Draw in the line. Label the line. We can also sketch lines by finding their x and y intercepts. Now remember that the x intercept occurs when y is 0 and the y intercept occurs when x is 0. And this particular method is really suited to that standard form. So if we substitute in 0 here, we get the x intercept straight away. If I substitute in 0 here, I've only got a small one step equation to solve to get the y intercept. So when y is 0, x is 4. And when x is 0, negative 2y is equal to 4, y is equal to negative 2. So let's graph this line. It's pretty easy. There's our grid, there's our x intercept, there's our y intercept. Draw in the line and make sure you label it. Now some lines are just difficult to graph. They don't work with the y-intercept gradient method and the x and y-intercepts are not pretty. Like this one, 5x take 4y is equal to 1. Have a look what happens when I try and find the x and y-intercepts. If I substitute in y equals 0, x is equal to 1 fifth. If I substitute in x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative a quarter. Nobody wants to graph those two points. Now all we need is two points to fix a line, but we would prefer if they were whole numbers. Let's have a look at our table of values. Other than the point 1, 1, they're all disgusting. But there is some good news on the horizon. If you can find one pair of coordinates that are integers, and we did find one, that was 1, 1, then you can use that gradient y-intercept method to find another point. Instead of starting at the y-intercept, we're going to start at the point 1, 1. But we're going to need to find the gradient. So what we're going to do is change to gradient intercept form. So let's have a look at it. I'm going to take this 4y over the other side. So 4y will equal 5x take away 1. Divide everything by 4. Our gradient is 5 on 4. So that means every 4 spots that I go to the right, I go up 5. So here's our line. Let's have a look at how we got it. Instead of starting at the y-intercept at negative quarter, I'm starting at 1, 1. And then I've gone up 5 across 4. That's how I've got my second point. Draw up the line, label the line, put the arrows on the end. We're going to finish off this section by graphing some regions. An inequality will represent a region on a Cartesian plane instead of a straight line. So remember that an inequality sign is not an equal sign, it's a greater than or less than sign. So how might we graph y is greater than 1? We need to start by graphing the boundary line, which is y is equal to 1. Now this is a good time for us to review horizontal and vertical lines. How do we graph y equals 1? This is a horizontal line. It goes through y equals 1 and y is always equal to 1. Now we want to graph y is greater than 1, so that's going to be everything above here that we're going to colour in, like this. But did you notice something strange happened? Okay, it became a dotted or a dashed line instead of a solid line. That's because I don't have an equal sign here under this inequality. This is not y is greater than or equal to 1, it's just greater than 1. So it's everything above this line but doesn't include the line. Now these sorts of regions are sometimes called half planes because they take the whole Cartesian plane and split it in half. How about this one? 
graph x is less than or equal to negative 2. Okay, we're going to start off by graphing x equals negative 2, which is a vertical line. It goes through x equals negative 2 everywhere, so all the way up and all the way down. We want less than or equal to negative 2, so that's in here. And this time, we haven't changed the line to a dotted line because we've got an equal sign here. Now, graphing horizontal and vertical lines is all very well, but what happens if the inequality has got x's and y's in it, like this one? We still need to graph that boundary line, which in this case is y is equal to 4x take away 1. Well, that's okay, we can do that. The y-intercept is negative 1, the gradient is 4, which is 4 over 1. So here's our line. There's our y-intercept, we go up 4, across 1, up 4, across 1. Now we've got a shade either this side or this side. But how do we know which side it is? Now I would caution you against trying to memorize a method for this because if the form of your line changes, like into standard form, your rule's not going to work. It's much better if you test a point. We try and test 0, 0 if it doesn't lie on the line, which in this case it doesn't. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to test 0, 0, which means I'm going to substitute that into here. So 0 is greater than 0, take 1. And then we ask, is 0 greater than negative 1? Yes, it is. So that means that this point here satisfies this inequality. So we want this side of the line, and we just colour it in. Again, we're going to have to change the line to a dotted line because we're greater than 4x minus 1, not greater than or equal to. Here's another one, graph x plus 2y is less than negative 4. So let's start by graphing x plus 2y is equal to negative 4. Now, because this is in standard form, I'm going to use the x and y intercept method, but it's up to you which method you want to choose. So if I want the x intercept, I'm going to substitute in y is 0. So x will equal negative 4. If I want the y intercept, I'm going to substitute in x is 0. So 2y equals negative 4 y is equal to negative 2. Let's sketch that line. So we can see our y-intercept here at negative 2 and our x-intercept up here at negative 4. All right, and we're going to test the point 0, 0. So let's substitute that in. 0 plus 0 is less than negative 4. Is 0 less than negative 4? No, it's not. So I'm going to cross that out. So that means that it's not going to lie on this side. 0, 0 is not going to be included. The region will be on this side. So let's colour that in. So what if 0, 0 lies on the line? Well, that's OK. We're just going to choose another point. Let's look at this final example. Graph 3x take y is greater than or equal to 0. All right. So we need to graph 3x take y equals 0. Now, I know it's in standard form, but the x-intercept, y-intercept method's not going to work because they're both equal to 0. So we're only going to get one point. So I'm going to turn this into the y equals mx plus b form, which is pretty simple. y is going to equal 3x. So our y-intercept is 0, our gradient is 3, which is 3 over 1. Here's our line. So we started at 0, 0. We went up 3, across 1, up 3, across 1. There's our line. You can see how it goes straight through 0, 0. So that's not an option for us to test. All right, but there are an infinite number of other points, aren't there? Let's try 1, 1, which is sitting in around about here. OK, we're going to substitute that back up into our inequality here. So that's going to give us 3 take 1 is greater than or equal to 0. 3 take 1 is 2. Is 2 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So we want to shade this side of the line. And this time it is a solid line because it's got an equal sign here. And that's our region. OK, that's the end of this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to further explore the equation of a straight line.